Just in time for Women's History Month comes the release of Anna Wisconsin Family Farm, historic tales of community, character, and culture. The book flings the barn doors wide open to a story where Anna Satori became the township's first female landowner a full 15 years before America's women even earned the right to vote in 1920. While Anna may never have held public office, women like Anna were the glue that bonded immigrant America and its seedling communities together. As a boy, I became fascinated by Anna's story the very day I realized that Grandma's 40 was not a reference to my grandma, Julia, who was now in her 60s, but a revered moniker for a parcel of our farm once owned for four decades by Julia's mother, Anna. As the lights of knowledge began flickering in my preteen head, a full 30 years after great grandma Anna's death, I wanted to dig deeper into this amazing woman's story. That's when I began to learn Anna had lost her maid of honor to tuberculosis at 38 years of age, how she buried two infant sons and laid an eighth grade daughter to her final rest two days after Christmas following a deadly bout of polio in 1926. A daring woman, Anna helped her husband, John Borich, hide the location of her bootlegging brother-in-law who just bought his sister a full-length mink coat. Also, Anna read the evening newspaper to John and handled all the farm accounts as her husband was only afforded a second grade education because there was work to be done on the homestead farm. Alas, Anna stood alone to run the farm at age 62 as no men in the family remained alive after she buried her husband, John. As I dug deeper into this story, I eventually learned the trail from Anna's adopted Burich family homestead to Anna's Satori family homestead was traveled for 16 years by her father, Wenzel. That's because Wenzel spent summers in his pioneer log cabin and wintered in his daughter Anna's homestead home for the final 16 years of his life after his daughter's marriage to John Borich. Anna also carried on her father Wenzel's tradition of sending money back to Bohemia for relatives too reluctant to immigrate to America. The envelope on the screen carried news back to the family that the money had safely arrived in Europe. The more I dug into Anna's life story, the more compelled I became by her story. So much so that by 2006, I used that very lane between the Burich and Satori family homesteads, along with Anna and John's love story as the foundation for my proposal to marriage to my wife, Krista. And now I bring Anna's story along with a cast of neighbors who have long left this world to life through a writing style called narrative nonfiction. While based on Anna's true story, I, as the author, interject thoughts from the day and weave historical lessons throughout the 31 short stories contained on a Wisconsin family farm, historic tales of character, community, and culture. I hope you enjoy reading it. <laughs> 